I am going to try to keep to time to talk about my topic. Um, it's a topic that I've been thinking about as to what to write, and typically as I, as I work, I typically don't write or put my presentations together till a few hours before, um, before the time. Um, but I spend a lot of time thinking about it. So I'm going to talk um, a little bit about myself. So you guys can understand where I'm coming from um, when it comes to the pursuit of happiness. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, that's me when I was, um, I think, six years old. Um, I'll be 45 this year. I actually just remembered, and I actually thought I was 45 already, but I'm not quite 45 yet. I'll be 45 in a few months. Um, I was born in Washington, D.C. and raised there. Although I spent a lot of my childhood here in Akure. Uh, my dad um, went to school, and my, my parents went to school in the U.S., relocated back right about the time Ondo State was created, in 1976. So my dad was one of the, I guess, the diaspora people that were being shipped in at the time to help get the states um, started. So we actually lived not too far from, from here, from the campus here. So I knew when Futa started up and, and all of that stuff. I was a young kid at the time, attending um, St. Peter's Demonstration School, which is down the road. So I'm sure anybody from St. Peter's here? No? Wow, interesting. It used to be one of the top schools back then. Um, I attended university at Howard University mainly because that's where my dad um, did his um, bachelor's program. Um, I went in there as a pre-pharmacy major, but I changed my major later on to computer science and transferred to the University of Maryland. Um, I enjoy traveling. Uh, due to the work that, I, that I've been doing for the past 13 years with Microsoft, I travel quite a bit, travel across the world. Lately, the travel has mostly been around Africa. Um, and then some local travel within Nigeria, and I'll talk about that um, later on as well. I see myself as a very open-minded, free-spirit individual, um, and a Christian. I, um, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I, I try as much as possible to attend church, um, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm married to, to a woman who pushes me as well, because um, I, I sometimes tend to slack when it comes to that. And when I was coming here, she already told me, don't be late, we're going to church on Sunday. So I have to be home today uh, because of that. Um, I'm a techie, I'm a geek. I love things technology. Um, I, find very, um, um, I find happiness in that. But one of my true passions, and this is actually one of the things that led me to relocate back to Nigeria, is... I just have a passion for agriculture for some reason. And I think it has to do with when I was little, uh, when my parents were here, we actually had a very big farm um, on Undo Road here where my mom had a poultry farm and my dad, being a civil servant, also had a farm where we planted yam, vegetables, tomatoes, corn, and so forth. And as a little boy, um, I mean, we didn't hire any labor. It was the kids and my cousins that we would go to the farm and till the land and, you know, go through the harvest. And we used to do that every weekend. So my childhood was spent going to school during the week, and then on Saturday and Sunday, we go to the farm to, um, to, to help my dad out. So that's a little bit about me. This picture was, um, I think I was in um, elementary school at the time when I took that picture. And um, I have many pictures like that. Um, I was, um, if you look at the picture very clearly, there are a lot of scratches on my face because I was a very troublesome kid. I used to get into fights. Um, all the time. So I had, have scratches all over my face. You can see my hair. My hair was also very wild, which I think I, I still carry that with me um, today. Um, in my passport picture when I was little, I had a big afro and I was crying um, because my parents always found it very difficult to comb my hair. Just like the presentation we saw earlier, I had very, 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 very kinky hair. Very, very kinky hair. Very, very bad. Not like your own hair, where I couldn't carry my hair like, <laughs> like, your, like your own hair. Mine was very kinky. And my parents found it so upsetting that 
on my passport picture when I was little, and I still have that passport picture today, my passport photo was of me with my hair in a mess and me crying. And how they were even able to issue me a passport with that picture is, is still baffling to me because I was actually crying when, uh, in my passport picture. But enough about me. Let's talk about the pursuit of happiness. And um, the co-creator who spoke earlier uh, mentioned this quote that I have here as to the pursuit of happiness. And I'm going to give a quote from the Declaration of Independence of the United States of July 4, 1776. The portion that I'm going to talk about is, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unenable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The, one of the founders of, the, of America, Thomas Jefferson, is attributed for this quote. This is not the exact nature of his quote because there was actually committees that actually worked on it, but this was the outcome of that quote. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And when you hear Americans talk about this, and this is something that, that people believe in very, very strongly. This is why Americans carry their guns and hold their guns. It's to protect their life, their liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Interpretation of this, of the pursuit of happiness, some people see it as to your property. Okay? What the government will do to provide for its citizens to, for them to be able to pursue a happy life in their, uh, in, their, in, their, in their own environment. So the key takeaway for me from that quote, as I said, is around life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are things that as individuals, and this shouldn't be something as when you're old or when you're retired that you should be thinking about. There are things that you should be thinking about taking the initiative on your own to determine your own future. As it relates to life, having liberty, freedom to think clearly, to act clearly, to do what your heart desires. And then secondly, a knowledge of the means by which that object can be best attained. So I, as an individual, need to be very mindful of that as to that particular object and the means for me to obtain it so I can derive my own happiness out of whatever activity or whatever passion that I have. That is why you see some people that are wealthy today that give up their wealth to do other things, charitable things, philanthropical things, and so forth. So those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Now, when it comes to the, when it comes to the answer, did you move that? Okay. when it comes to the answer, um, what you need to look at are three key things. When it comes to happiness, what does your mind tell you around happiness? What does your mind tell you? Listen to that inner voice inside you as to what it is that can make you happy. As I said, as I, when I was young, I spent a lot of time on the farm. And actually, my father told me that his father, which is my grandfather, also had a big farm. And my dad spent a lot of time on the farm. My dad was one of the um, first educated kids from my grandfather. My grandfather had many kids, over 40 kids. But my dad was probably number 10, but he was the first, first one that actually went to college, graduated, had um, 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 a higher degree, and so forth. But he was still interested in the farm. Even till today, my dad is in the 70s, he's still farming. And he, that is his passion. What he studied in university was totally different than farming. But that is his passion. And he's listened to that inner voice. And I'm listening to my inner voice as well. And my inner voice is telling me that that's the thing that will make me happy. Define your own happiness. It could vary. Some people's definition of happiness could be their closeness to their family, their friends, um, being able to do charitable work um, or volunteer work. Um, things that, you, that will give you personal fulfillment in life are things that people think about when it comes to defining their own happiness. 
And then use your happiness to discover your purpose. What is your purpose in life? Is your purpose in life to be as rich as you want to be? Or is your purpose in life to be as happy as you want to be? Happiness can equal wealth. Wealth can equal happiness. But you just need to find the right formula to get it right. Where you can actually be very happy. And, and, ha and if that's your purpose in life, to be able to define and, and do that. And then once you have that, share it. It's very, very contagious. Studies have proven that, that people that have happy relationships, the more they engage with, each, with other people, that happiness effuses. It transfers to other people. So those are the three things that you need to take a look at or that I believe that I've taken a look at from my own point, from my own way. Now, there are two key points there around relationships and spiritual engagement. When it comes to relationships, it doesn't necessarily mean the number of friends you have. It has to do with the quality of the friendships that you have, the closeness of the friendship, how frequently you engage as a friendship. It could be your spouse, it could be your boyfriend, it could be your girlfriend, it could be a family member. It doesn't necessarily mean how many people you have, but the more of those type of encounters you have, studies have proven that the more happier you become. The other thing is around spiritual engagements. So the spiritual and the religious thing. This is where I think from a Nigerian perspective, why Nigerians are so happy. Nigerians are very, very spiritual. Nigerians are very, very religious. And those institutions create an environment that fosters happiness. Because you engage with people, you have a relationship with the people that you're congregating with together, and that fosters um, engagement and communications, and then happiness, okay? Indirectly, whether it's your purpose to be happy, because people don't go to church to be happy. I don't know of anybody that says, oh, I want to go to um, St. Stephen's Catholic Church or St. Stephen's um, Anglican Church because I want to be happy. You go there because you are seeking something. It's while you're there that you then discover um, happiness through your engagement with your pastor, different groups in church, prayer groups, and so forth. So that is another key thing that at least I've picked up. Now, for me personally, obviously the relationship I have with my family is very, very essential and key to me. I'm very, very close to my family. I wish I was closer to my family and even other family members. But obviously... That is, you know, I, have, I come from a very big family, um, extended family, so it's very, very difficult. From a religious perspective, I've also seen changes. People that I know personally that have become, as the older that I've gotten, have become more spiritual, more religious, I've seen them being more happy, more content with life, and also being more um, um, helpful and charitable to others. When you're younger, you may have a sense of entitlement and also have some sense of individualism. Nothing wrong with that. That is normal for that stage. But the older you become, you start to reflect back on things, things that you could have done better, that you wish you could take back, and that makes you reflect and want to give back. So for me, for my happiness... I've defined it very simply that once I'm done with my day job, I'm not going to work anymore. Because whatever it is that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to love it. And once I love it, it will be like I'm not working. Because anything you love, if you do it, is no longer a job. It's a passion. You will do it for free. And my passion is around farming. I don't know if I was, um, where is Joel? I think I was telling Joel that um, when we were talking about this topic and he, he had this strange look in, in his face that uh, me, a farmer, no, that is my passion. That makes me happy. When I was in the U.S., I would sometimes drive for hours around farmland because where I used to live, there were many, many farms. I would just drive around and look at the farmers and what they're doing. And sometimes I would get out of the car to go talk to them, to find out from them um, how they've done it. 
and you'll realize that a lot of these farmers, especially in the U.S., is generational. It's from their grandparents. The farm has been inherited by another family member down, down, down the, down the, um, um, the whole family. And in some cases, it's sad because you see those farmlands being sold to developers and you see housing estates going up in there. I, like the, um, a, I would like to see a world where food and food is one thing that we cannot do without. Everybody in this room has to eat. Everybody in the world has to eat. There are over 150 million people in Nigeria. They all have to eat. And they all want to eat three times a day. Some people more. Huh? Some people would like to eat more. And they want a lot of variety in what they eat. We're becoming a more... Um, the middle class is, is expanding in the country. So people's tastes are changing. They want more variety in, in, in what they eat. They don't want to be importing stuff into the country anymore. That gives me pleasure. And the fact that you're even helping the local economy, labor, um, being able to employ people and so forth, is another passion that I have that drives me. So, I'll end with this quote from Aristotle. Happiness is the meaning and purpose of life. The whole aim and end of human existence is all about happiness. So find in you, your inner you, what makes you happy. Pursue it. Get it. You'll find out that you will never ever have to walk a day in your life. Thank you very much.